2K Australia. All right. Good thing that studio doesn't exist anymore. Yes, it does. Does it? They helped make Borderlands pre-sequel. Oh. The what studio? No, wait. That's irrational. Irrational Games doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mirden B. I'm Free J Fly, and I did a review of Borderlands pre sequel. We're playing Bioshock, though. That's how I know that information. New game. We've played other shooters. Well, clearly you want to. Oh. I was going to say, clearly you want to do hard mode. The audio. Whoa. 1960, Mid-Atlantic. Nice to know that this game takes place when my dad was born. They told me. Oh shit, there's no subtitles. Son, it's a J mistake. Special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right. They were right. And when they're right, they're right. We're dead. Game over. Roll credits. Roll credits. <laughs> Man, do you think you couldn't do that anymore? Make like a satire film. And just have the whole thing just be like five seconds long, and then the movie ends. Doesn't five second films do that? No, but actually, like, set it as a theatrical release. Oh. Like, plan it out to be this big, large epic, and then only film like five seconds. <laughs> Alright, well, disaster and chaos is ensuing around us. One second, though. Do we want yeah. art subtitles? Back to the chaos. I hear so, people screaming. Yeah, it's like you still hear people screaming in there. It's like, um, should I save them? But everything is burning around me. Bring them to rapture as well. See how long they survive. <laughs> yeah, for a game. Wait, what you. I like how it's all like black and then you look forward and there's like clouds suddenly. The clouds. It's like you can see where like the skybox ended. Oh, right. But uh, for a game made in like, what, 2007? Or re released in 2007, I think. It's yeah. pretty good. Better than some other games we have played that were released around that time. <coughs> Fear. <coughs> <laughs> I had so much enthusiasm in trying to hide that. <laughs> As in, no, none at all. I mean, yeah, I guess, like, this is more artistic. Propaganda. No gods or kings. That's not what that says, but, I mean. No gods or kings. No, no, not only you, men. the fucking propaganda bit. Oh. Yeah, they're just like, oh, it's just propaganda. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's just propaganda. Like, a quote from Andrew Ryan. It's like, didn't Who's? we put art subtitles to, like, say what the art says? Alright. Moving on. To Rapture. Spoilers. What was that? Spoilers. Did you just, like, skip a few steps? Uh, yeah. I was just uh, so excited to go into the bathosphere. You know what? Like, I wouldn't be doing this. Like, I would just sit at that lighthouse, like... Just wait for help? Yeah! Like, I mean, sh um, probably rip off that propaganda sign, go back outside, try to find a way to light it on fire and make, like, a uh, smoke signal. But like, 
Okay, going down all the way to the bottom of the lighthouse, I'm finding Admiral a bathosphere, Ryan, and, and I'm here just submerging myself. Like, no. <laughs> Is a man not it's not something I would do. Sweat of his brow. No, says the man in Washington. It belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican. It belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. I gotta sneeze. Do it. Where the artist would not fear the censor. Where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality. Where the I like that I say I gotta sneeze and just like small. it doesn't come. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. And then you say, oh, never mind. I wouldn't do that. Oh, I usually don't talk before a sneeze. You know, I never actually figured out just how deep is Rapture. But you were attempting to build Rapture one time in Minecraft. Then it broke our friend's server. It's like what? Our friend JB had to quarantine that part of the server because every time you passed a certain part, the, ser the entire server would crash for everyone. So what's up with their hooks? Are their hooks always like hot? Yes. Hey lady, I don't want to pay for this. I just found it lying around. Now you're gonna destroy it. Epilepsy warning. Christ almighty. Would you kindly take off that shore radio? Would you kindly kill that splicer? I don't know how you survived that plane crash, but I've never been one to question Providence. I'm Atlas, and I aim to keep you alive. Now keep on moving. So how do they know a plane crash happened? Yeah, I wonder that too. Take a deep breath and step out of the bathosphere. I won't leave you twisting in the wind. It's not like surveillance was a too big to of a thing. Eye, but you're gonna have to trust me. Was it? I'm trying to think. I mean, could you really see the surface from here? Well, like, I'm also trying to think of, like, surveillance and, like, the stories my dad tells me about TV back when he was a kid. Okay. Wasn't that great? Well, I mean, it's a universe where you have a Vita chamber that will resurrect you. But it's also 1960. With a Vita chamber? You could disable those if you wanted. Rapture is dead. Hey, the subtitles got that right. Please don't. I have terrible childhood memories of that very thing. Do you? Yes, actually. Like, okay, I told you about how when I first got my ears pierced, I would play with them and eventually, um, I got it, uh, my earring clamped down against my ear 
fat enough to where my skin started to grow around it, right? Did I not tell you this story? No. Okay, so when I was in like kindergarten or first grade, I got my ears pierced for the very first time. And, you know, no one told me not to like play or mess with them. I guess they just thought, you know, she's six, seven years old. She'll, she'll be fine. Leave me alone! And, um... Oh god, I got distracted. So, I started messing with them, and about, you know, a couple months later, um, you know, I wake up one morning, and, you know, my ear is all scabbed over, and, like, it's, like, surrounding the amethyst part of my earring. And, um, I go to my, my dad and stepmom, and I'm all like, hey, uh, I need my earring out. <laughs> oh. So, um, they're like, they're looking at it, and I was like, oh, can we push it out? And I just, I started screaming and wailing when they, like, put the ice on there and started, like, pushing on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was not having that. And, uh, they're like, do you want to go to the hospital? And I was like, is the hospital gonna make it feel bad? <laughs> like, cause like, you know, they're trying to just take it out with an Ow. ice cube and like, just pushing it out of my ear. Mm -hmm. So... Obviously I wasn't happy because I'm six, seven years old. So I go to the hospital and because, I, because I'm six or seven years old, uh, when it's finally time for me to go in there, the nurses, instead of just giving me the fucking uh, Novocaine like and going with it and assuring me it's like it's not gonna hurt, they, instead of reassuring me and, you know, being, having actual bedside manner, there's three nurses that come in to have a sheet. And they wrap me in it while the other nurse takes the Novocaine and pops out the earring and they didn't tell me that this was happening so i'm screaming and crying i'm like i'm like because my dad brought me there too so i'm like screaming for my dad I'm like daddy help me and that is why i'm claustrophobic look mr good Bubbles. story it's an thanks angel. something to tell the kids what kids i don't I want kids see light coming from his belly Wait a minute. He's still breathing. It's all right. I know he'll be an angel soon. All right, creepy child. You all right, boy? First time plasma's a real kick from a mule. But there's nothing like a fistful of light in 